Hey, it's Kim Commando today, your daily podcast to keep you up to date with all things digital and beyond. And I'd love to have you be a part of our podcast. You can make an appointment to speak with me. Just head over to commando.com and on the top right, there's a button that says email Kim. Fill that out and that's it. I always like to start with something interesting and I must be living in a cave because Oxford Dictionary just released the results for the word of the year, but this is for last year. And it's a word that I've never heard of before. It's certainly one that I've never had anyone use in a convo with me or else I would have asked them what it meant. And I literally only heard of this word while reading about it as it's the word of the year. But 93% of people who voted in the word of the year chose it over the word metaverse, which of course we all know what that means. It's Mark Zuckerberg's whole idea to be king of the virtual universe. Now, so are you ready for Oxford Dictionary's official word of 2022? Just released this past week. Actually, it's not a word, it's a phrase. Okay, you ready? Goblin mode. Have you ever used that word? Have you ever said that to anybody? Anybody has ever said, I don't know how it became the word of the year. Uh, goblin mode is defined as a type of behavior which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, greedy, typically in a way that rejects social norms or expectations. That is what goblin mode means. So let's use that in a sentence. Okay. Prince Harry has gone total goblin mode and has left the royal family to be a painter. He's now known as the artist, formerly known as Prince. <laughs> yes, and on that happy note, welcome. I'm Kim Commando, America's digital goddess. And you better start putting your thinking cap on because let me tell you, you're about ready to get more tech smarts because every single thing is now a tech thing. And you can find my award-winning show in over 425 top radio stations throughout the United States. And we're streaming in your favorite radio app. And you can find us streaming on demand 24-7 over at getkim.com. You get a free 30-day trial, uh, discounts for seniors, service personnel, teachers, active military, and vets, too. And you can also hear the Kim Commando Show on the American Forces Network Radio. You know, they broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And a special thank you goes out to our servicemen and women in the Army, the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, and the Space Force who can listen to the Kim Commando Show through the American Forces Network Radio Network. And our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. All right, as you know, every single day I check out at least 30 different websites to make sure you're up to date on everything that's happening in the tech world. And this is part of the show where I like to talk about consumer tech and trends. And so let me take you first to the world of Nicole Onia. Every day, Nicole logs onto TikTok and live streams herself at work, right? She's doing nothing special. She just sits in front of her computer for hours and hours. And guess what? She has over 100,000 people that are watching her and following her just as she works. So what's enthralling? They call it body doubling. That's right, a new phrase you need to know. Uh, it's kind of a craze. If you work in your home office, no one checks in, no one keeps you on task. And that means you're not being held accountable. And that's where body doubling comes in. You work with someone else to keep your mind on a task. And there are loads of places to co-work with strangers. Uh, Flow Club is where you can actually book sessions with other distracted workers. Not sure that I get this. Um, but it does remind me of the time I took Ian to work with me. Like one of those take your kid to work days. Anyway, he's starting to get cranky. He's a little guy. And I asked him what was wrong. Well, he said to me, Mommy, I I'm confused. Where are all the clowns that you said you worked with every day? And we were in the break room. Mm, kind of embarrassing. Uh, anyway, moving on to number two of five, celebrity deep fakes are your problem too. Imagine this, you are scrolling on Facebook and suddenly see an ad. It starts off pretty innocent because it stars Emma Watson. She smiles at the camera, then out of nowhere, Hmm, Emma's doing something like, what is Emma doing? Emma, Emma, you can't do that. You're a celebrity. Looks like she's doing a sex act, okay? Well, the woman in the ad obviously isn't the real Emma Watson from Harry Potter. It's part of a campaign for a deep fake app called Face Mega, which allows you to swap any face onto any video of your choosing. Yeah, deep fakes are, of course, videos where faces and sounds are switched out, manipulated. Uh, apps like Face Mega make it easy. So deepfake technology is now being used in a lot of porn. They found 96% of deepfake material online is pornographic. Uh, the biggest victims of, of course, female celebrities and children. Isn't that horrifying? Uh, Facebook has finally taken down the whole advertising campaign for Face Mega. 
Uh, which brings us to number three. This is a disturbing story, but you need to know about it because Pinterest is not just for party ideas anymore. When nine-year-old Victoria signed up for Pinterest, she used it to collect pictures of animals and crafts and fingernail art. She had all these boards there. And then she also put up videos of her to share her life. Sounds pretty harmless, right? Well, while she was doing this, adult men started pinning those same videos of Veronica to their own Pinterest collections. And their boards have titles like Sexy Little Girls, Guilty Pleasures, Young Girls. Yeah, this is on Pinterest. I think Pinterest, I think it's a public company. What are they doing? Uh, this poor little Victoria doing a cartwheel is pinned over 50 times. Uh, Pinterest is creating this space to expose girls to pedophiles. And so NBC has actually done a whole investigation about this. So. What does this mean to you? If you got kids in the family, you might want to pass this information along to them so they aren't posting videos and photos of themselves online. Uh, it's just disgusting. All right, moving on to number four, relive the good times and maybe the bad thanks to AI. What if I told you you could hop back in time and revisit a memory and AI would make it feel like you're there at any given moment? Why would you want to do this, first of all? Well, let me tell you about the tech. Okay, it collects information. Uh, we're using your, everything that you've got posted online, your videos, your images, your audio, and then it processes them to, into real memories, the ones that weren't actually taped, and it's using a virtual reality headset, so you actually feel like you're there. You know, your brain blocks out certain memories on purpose. Um, maybe you don't want to always relive the pain of losing a loved one or a detail of a surgery. It's kind of your our brain's way of saying, you know, just kind of relax. I'm here to protect you. You may not remember every single thing in your life. Uh, anyway, in case you want to check it out, it's at wistlabs.com. That's wistlabs.com. And you can sign up to take a memory dive. And I got to tell you once, I threw a boomerang with some RAM attached to it. Boy, that really brought back some memories. <laughs> you get that? That boomerang with RAM. Bringing back memories. You're a tough crowd. All right, last. This coming in at number five. This guy is very clever. He's driving down a snowy mountain road in some national park up in Oregon, now in the Cascades, and all of a sudden he gets stuck. Problem is, he has no bars. He's got no cell phone service. He's in a tough spot, but he's trapped in the snow. He cannot get out, and to make matters worse, his family was out of the country, and nobody knew where he was. So it's a life-threatening situation. So what did this guy do? Ah, he says, I have a drone and I have a phone. So he attached his cell phone to his drone. He typed up a text message, explained that he needed help, and gave his precise location. Then he hit send, flew the drone several hundred feet miles away until he actually had cell phone service. And then the text that he wrote was sent to the police. How genius is this? Uh, once the text message got through the officials, they were able to go and rescue him. But wait, there's more. Another driver has spent days trapped in the snow. And because of this guy's drone message, somebody else was being able to be saved. So this guy actually saved two lives. This is such a wonderful story. I could just drone on and on about it, but I won't. All right, coming up, of course, we have your phone calls. And I've got some alternatives to pricey Photoshop. We have our trivia question of the week. Oh, you don't want to miss this one. It's really hard. Also, we have 15 great things you can get for free in our money tip. And then also, is it true? Facebook, do they really listen to our conversations? And of course, you got me on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Hey, our T-Mobile Unlimited listener line is now open at one 825 5254 is the way to join us. If you're just too shy to come on the show and the podcast, I get that. You can drop me your questions over at the website. That's commando.com. And in the upper right-hand corner, there's a link that says email Kim. Jen in Louisville, Kentucky. Hello there, Jen. Glad to have you with us. Hi. Welcome. What's going on? Well, I just, I have um, a question. More, um, it's, it's a long backstory of... Uh, a scammer. Okay. And you know, we all know they're out there in various forms, but this one has continued for over three years now. Wow. A lot of it seems very legitimate. A lot of it seems very scamish. I'm just indecisive on 
whether it is or whether it isn't. Um, it does involve money. So you said this has been going on for almost or th- over three years. How did you tell me really just in short sentences, uh, how did you meet this person and what has been going on over the last three years? Have you spoken to them, text them, video them or what's going on? Well, he friended me on a social media site um, and it was just, you know, a, a random thing. You know, he said, hey, good job. It was something I posted that I had done. It was on a it was on a more of a stealth tracking site, not like Facebook. Sure. Okay. Um, and then mm-hmm. he he friended me. He you know you know where are you from? Are you married? Do you have kids? The normal sort of things. And then he wanted to chat on Hangouts or Google Chat, which we did, and all was well. Nothing out of the ordinary. And then, you know, about a month or six weeks in, it became about money. And it was always a story. And the story seemed very legitimate. I mean, I didn't really see those normal red flags flying, but I'm sure they were. I just wasn't in tune to them. But, you know, long story short, it was this one thing, and then he did get money. And then it became. So how much did you send? How much money? How much money have you sent them, Jen? Probably close to a hundred k. Oh, it's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And um, if they are, or if he is a scammer, he is. He is probably one of the best that I have ever encountered, and I have encountered many. So what is the big red flag that? Suddenly, you're like, maybe this isn't so legit. What recently happened? Well, what you know, it's it's been in the making, but the the most recent thing has been, um, he keeps mentioning a board of directors and um, of this company, and he keeps telling me that they are. Um, not very nice people, and if they don't get what they want, they will come after your family until they get what they want from you. So it's been um, a lot of threats, a lot of um, harassment, things like that. And, you know, I just got to thinking, would that really be something that a company's and it's one of your typical scam companies, oil rig kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just got to thinking, well, would that really happen, number one? I mean, is there would a company have a board of directors that would really harm you? And then the other part of that is, um, is it possible for... I mean, would they come after an innocent person just because? Okay, let, okay. Let, let me let me interrupt all this. Okay, let me ask you a question, Jen. And I want you to be really honest with me. Okay. Are you lonely? No. I don't know all the facts, but I would be ninety nine point ninety nine percent sure that you've been swindled at out of a hundred grand, and. Now they know that you might be getting to the end of that line and they're going to go for the jugular. You should not have sent anybody $100,000. Next time you want to send somebody $33,000 a year, I want you to send it to me. Correct. Okay. And I will talk to you. I will talk to you as much as you want me to talk to you on Google Chat. It may not be me, but it may be somebody else because that's who you're – you're not talking to a person. You're talking to – a company. You're talking to an organized crime ring. That's who you're talking to. And they are so good. They've been trained at this since they were probably 10, 12 years old. And they normally like to go after lonely women. And that's why I asked you if you were lonely. And if you're not lonely, then that means you're not that smart. And I know you're smarter than this. Yes. So what, so basically what I'm hearing you say now, they're wanting $1,200. 
to decrypt a file. You know what? You stop this. You stop this. I don't want to hear anymore what they want. You need to stop this right now. You need to change your email address. Anything that you had associated with them, you need to shut it all down. Well, they did last week send me all of the information of where I work. So I did have myself taken off of the directory. And but they already have that information. Well, you already gave it to them. They already have it. They no, I didn't, I didn't give it. To, I didn't oh, give them that. You gave them enough information over the last three years that they could figure out who you are. I guarantee you. It was on the bank transfers, your first and last name, anything. They have it. They have it. That, that you are correct. Okay. So if this local enforcement is not helping, you need to call the FBI. And you need to maybe go down to the police station and say, I am afraid. This is what happened. Just and and but you need to change everything. You need to shut down any type of social media accounts that you have, your LinkedIn, whatever it may be, because they have everything they need in order to keep coming after you, and they're gonna keep coming after you unless you slap them down and you say, knock it off. And by the way, I want my hundred grand back. If you want you want to do anything, you're gonna go to the law go to your local law station, police station rather. Tell them you want to figure out how I can get my money back. Call the FBI. Go to the Internet Crime Complaint Center, ic3.gov, and give them all the information. Tell them you want your hundred grand back. That's where the goal should be. That's where all your energy should be focused right now. How do I get my hundred grand back? Think about how long you had to work in order to make a hundred thousand dollars. How long did that take? It took a long time. I'm talking about after taxes. Come on, Jen. You got to be smarter than this. It seems like I'm getting more and more of these phone calls that guys and gals are getting scammed by these so-called romancers that are located in another country. I mean, sometimes these are just 10 or 12-year-old boys that have a script and they go after. But, you know, think about this. The guy worked offshore. She spent three years in a chat room with him. Never saw him, never had a phone call. Nothing, just in a chat room. Gave him $100,000. Probably gave him even more than $100,000. And she just doesn't want to see that she's getting scammed. She wants to believe that this is going on and on. Not so. Hey, listen, coming up, we have our trivia you don't want to miss. And of course, we have more of your phone calls on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Hey, it's time now for what I like to call Commanding the Tech World Trivia. And this week is brought to us by NetSuite. All right, because we've all seen how the world has changed because of technology, maybe you don't know some of the side stories, some of the backstories, the insider secrets that make our digitally connected world go round and round. So when playing Commanding the Tech World Trivia, you need to think out of the box, really think. And our very special guest contestant joining us this week to win a very, very valuable prize coveted by millions across the country. Right, maybe not that many. I was exaggerating. It's the official Kim Commando Show fanny pack is the prize. Uh, joining us is Rich in San Diego, California. Hi there, Rich. Hey, how are you doing? Great. What do you do there in San Diego? I'm a real estate agent, and I want to tell you I love your show. Uh, I don't listen as often as I'd like to, but I always learn something and usually get a few laughs, too. So <laughs> well, that's thanks good. for what you do. Well, that's good. Well, as a realtor, you know you're dealing with money, right, and finance. So you should be really, really good at the trivia question this week because we're going to be talking about tech right. companies that were initially successful and they received funding from not vulture capitalists, venture capitalists, right? But maybe these okay. companies lost a lot of money. I mean, you've heard of Theranos, right, Rich? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, and I don't know if you haven't if you haven't seen the show. It's the dropout on Hulu. It's so good. But if you haven't heard of Theranos, you're living in a cave. Uh, they said with just a few drops of blood, they promised that its so-called Edison test could detect conditions such as cancer, or diabetes. At one point, they were valued over nine billion dollars. Wow. Well, as we all know, mm-hmm. Elizabeth Holmes she got sentenced to eleven years and three months in prison, and her boyfriend Sonny Bawani got twelve years and eleven months. And so, what we're going to talk about here are some 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 VC funded companies. And I'm going to tell you about four of them. And now one of them is not true, okay? Uh, <laughs> and these are VC companies that failed. So the first one on our list is Juicero. 
they made this high-tech juicing machine, and you had to use those proprietary juice packages, and they could only be used with this machine, and the juicer was $400. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to buy a $400 juicer. Okay. Uh, they right. raised $120 million in funding, but they shut down in 2017. Uh, next on our list is Cubi. Uh, they said that, you know, we're going to have a streaming platform where the videos are going to be super short because everybody has a really short attention span. They raised, before they launched, $1.75 billion. Okay, billion dollars uh, before it launched in 2020, and it shut down just six months after it launched. Uh, next on our list is MoviePass. It was a subscription service that allowed you to see the movies in the theaters at home for a monthly fee. They raised uh, $65 million, and then about two years later, they filed for bankruptcy. It's a lot. This is a lot of money just going out the window. Uh, and finally, we have Snowflake, uh, another subscription-based service that raised $53 million. Snowflake sprung to life during COVID when everyone had to work from home. And it allowed HR departments to give employees monthly virtual participation per, per, participation awards. Sorry about that. Virtual participation awards during COVID. And after the pandemic, they shut down. Okay. So now one of these stories is not true. So is it the uh, $400 juicer, the short form streaming platform that raised $2 billion, uh, movie pass that raised $65 million so you could watch movies at home, or Snowflake uh, that raised $53 million for these virtual participation awards. So which one is not true? I think I've heard of Snowflake. And then the second one was QB, right? Yes. I think I've heard of that one. So it's probably one or three. Uh, the Juicer and uh, what was the third one? The Movie Pass. Movie Pass. But that was, you said, streaming at home? Yeah, you could see uh, movies at home that were actually still in the theaters. I'm going to go with um, the juicer. Juicero. So you think that's wrong. Yeah. Okay. Let's... Correct. All right. So Correct. let's ask our judges. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It was Snowflake. I totally made oh. that up. I'm, I oh. mean, think about it. You know, everybody talks about Snowflakes, how they get these virtual awards for doing nothing, you know, or these participation <laughs> awards. So that's where I came up with that. Uh, but there is a company called Snowflake. There is. It's a cloud-based data warehousing company. Uh, they do data storage and cloud sharing and all this stuff. They raised yeah. uh, $1.4 billion in VC funding. And I thought this was interesting. You know, where where do you think like a cloud-based company should be headquartered? I mean, you're in real estate. Where do you think that company really is, is probably typically headquartered? Where do you think? What part of the country? Uh, California, San Francisco, or Silicon, Silicon Valley. Okay, so did I. That's what I totally thought. And I looked it up. Their headquarters is in Bozeman, Montana. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Well, and they did $2 billion. <laughs> That's right. And probably the taxes, too. Uh, yes. They did $2 billion in revenue last year. Wow. Wow. Like crazy. All right. So, Rich, tell me what's going on with you. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a real estate agent. I've not really been uh, on social media the way I should be. I hired some marketing people. They helped me put together some uh, digital marketing things. And uh, for the first time in my life, I actually started using Google Drive. And um, um, I started noticing that, and I was just storing stuff there, and I would send people a link that only they could view. But since I've been doing that, somebody's been uploading porn to my Google Drive. I've changed my password. That doesn't help. I always, and this is on a daily basis, I... Uh, oh, gosh. Yeah, you know, I... Um, I forget what they call it, but, you know, I've marked it as, uh, you know, not spam, but, uh, you know, sexually explicit material and reported it to Google. And I've even sent numerous emails to support at gmail.com. And I'm getting no, you know, no guidance. Nobody's calling me back or, or emailing me. And I can't stop this porn from being uploaded to my, you know, Google Drive. Wow. This is... Um... That's frightening, isn't it? Yes. Because uh, you don't want your clients going in there. So, Rich, uh, what exactly are you selling? <laughs> Just wondering, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. 
Does, does she come with the house? Curious. That's Just wondering. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, a couple of yeah, right. It's not. <laughs> um, a first thing, let's just go through the basics. You have to make sure that you have set up two-factor authentication on your Google account. I do. Uh, yeah. So, okay, got that. I have that. Um, I would also check. You said this marketing company. Uh, now, I'm wondering if they have something where they have been infiltrated, uh, and then on their computers they have you've allowed them access to that drive. And maybe they're getting in that way. I guess that's possible, but it seems to me that it's like a read only as opposed to, you know, two way. You know, I don't think that they can get in and correct anything or or put anything on my drive. But I'm kind of an analog guy. I don't really know much about uh, these new this newfangled technology. What we have to do is we want to check. We want to go in and check your settings to make sure that you're the admin and you didn't give admin access to anybody else or okay. any type of. Uh, maybe there are some connected apps or services on the Google account, and so we want to make sure that no, that they're not there. Um, we want to make sure that you run a scan and you don't have any malware on your system. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, you said you've already contacted Google, right? Yeah. Um, and they're not going to help you. <laughs> I'm sorry yeah. to, to I've already be found the that bearer out. of bad news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, because it's just – and it's so ironic to me. I mean, we, we accept no help from tech companies. But imagine if you like you tried to change a flight in United and nobody ever called you back. Nobody answered the phone, right? And mm -hmm. nobody did anything. And you're like, right. "Okay, that would be unacceptable." Somehow we get with tech companies we're like, "Oh, I guess that's just the way that they operate. We're just going to we're just going to let that go. We're not going to say anything about it." <laughs> um you know, what we can do is I I'd like to put you on the phone with uh, John, he's our IT genius, so he can walk you through your various Google settings. Okay. Um, and because John set up all of our Google Workplace, and he's he is. He's my IT genius. He's amazing. And okay. so um, because this is something I think what what I'd like – this is very difficult just to answer by, by the phone. But mm -hmm. it kind of requires somebody to go through each of your settings to say, oh, this, this is maybe where you allowed that permission to occur. So we can, uh, we can make sure that that's, that window's closed. Uh, you know, okay. Barring that, you might have to shut down your Google Drive account and get a new one, uh. which isn't that much of a trauma. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on hold, Rich. Okay? Okay. And okay. I'm sorry you didn't win the fanny pack. But you know what? Well, let's, let's send you the fanny pack as, an, as a consolation prize. Oh, what do you that think? Would be awesome. How about that? Thank you. Yeah. Yay. So, Rich, Thank I'm going to put you on hold. Uh, I think Maddie's screening today, and we'll get your contact information, and we'll make sure that we hook you up with John so that this way you can check all those Google settings. Wow. What a nightmare that would be. Porn and Google Drive that you're sharing with clients. Yikes. Hey, by the way, if you are a Commando community member, just a reminder that our very own IT genius John works the message boards, the Q&A message boards. And if you're not a member, what's holding you back? Be one of the cool kids and support what we do. Head over to getkim.com. Once again, you get a free 30-day trial. And we got a lot of discounts. Again, that's getkim.com. All right. I'm going to blow through these really quickly, but you're going to want to check out the entire list over on the website. What can you get for free because money is so tight now? First of all, you can get free photo editing software like Canva and Pixel and, of course, Adobe Express. Now, what about video editing software? Well, DaVinci is so sweet. And if you're on a Mac or your iPhone, Apple iMovie. Word processing software like Microsoft Office. You can get LibreOffice. You can freeze your credit for free. We're going to tell you how to do that. You can get burner email addresses, disposable email addresses for free, like 10-minute email. There's also Hide My Email on your iPhone. You can brush up on 37 different languages like Spanish and French and German and Ukrainian, Chinese, Italian. Uh, you get free ebooks. You can also get free audiobooks and free internet speed tests. You can also get free internet. I don't know if you know that. The Emergency Broadband Benefit Program gives up to 50 bucks a month for broadband service. You can get free shipping materials, uh, a free passport photo, free magazines. You can get free crafts to make with the kids, like a 3D printed lap lamp and you can actually learn astrophotography. You can watch your favorite movies. And so if you're paying for streaming, you definitely want to check out that. So uh, wherever you are right now, make sure that you remember you can get this entire list over at commando.com. And then there's a link that says Kim Show. 
All right, still coming up, we have more of your phone calls as well as an answer to a question I get a lot. Kim, it was so weird. I was talking to my wife, my husband, my friend, and then suddenly the exact thing we were talking about pops up as an ad on Facebook. Ooh, how was that happening? And coming up, we have more of your phone calls and more tips you can't afford to miss on the Kim Commando Today podcast. Hey, just a quick reminder, if you're not getting our podcast, make sure that you search for My Last Name Commando wherever you get your podcasts. We have Kim Commando today. That's Monday through Friday, as well as our daily tech updates every single day of the week. And again, that's Commando with a K, of course. All right, Nick, Atlanta, Georgia. Hi there, Nick. Hey, Kim. Um, I just first of all, I want to say thank you for all the information you provide so many. Um, and it's just so useful and helpful, but also to your great staff there. The interactions with them have just been amazing. But I want to say thank you all for that. But I got a quick question. I'm looking for some help on some. I take a lot of notes using my iPhone, the 14 Pro Max, um, using that um, app. Um, guest notes that's in there. And unfortunately, I'm just typing or I have to keep my phone up to my mouth to speak into it. Just wonder if there's an easier way of using notes, maybe through a microphone or something like that. Currently, I work in a retail environment, so I'm walking constantly. And just looking for an easier way to be able to send that my information to notes without sitting there and type. Well, I'll tell you, that notes app, it's, I think it's one of the most underrated apps that's available on your phone. It's so handy. It's so great. It is. It's wonderful. I use it. I use mine all the time, especially folks, if you've never used it, you should just try it. Even to like scan documents, it will be a whole document scanner. Really, really powerful thing right there on your phone. Um, what, what I'm going to recommend is a wireless lav mic. And so you're, it's, a, it's a mic that you're going to put on your shirt collar. Okay. And there's there's no wires, and then it just plugs into the the phone's power port, uh, and they're about twenty five dollars, and it works really really well. And because it's so close to your on your collar, the audio recordings are going to be uh, pretty darn good. And even if you're doing just voice to text or whichever one you're doing, that you'll find that the accuracy of that's going to be pretty. Uh, much better than if you're holding the phone up to your mouth, which is like so annoying. It is. <laughs> <Right? It's> like, <laughs> it is. And beats trying to type all of this stuff um, in the process. So, And let me tell you, it's, it's just, it's not a good look. It's not just walking around talking into your phone. So uh, hang on the line, Nick, and Maddie's going to give you um, a link to, uh, I'm going to recommend the, the, the May Besta is the, is the line. It's a, a cordless omnidirectional condenser recording mic. A lot of people use it for interviews, and it's on sale. I think it's on sale right now for about 25 bucks. It used to be, I think it was, I don't know, $50. It's like 50% off or something going on right now. I'm not sure why, but it's a really, really great lav mic. And Nick, thank you for your call. You know, I use notes all the time to create to-do lists. It's so easy, really. It's fabulous. If you, haven't doing, if you haven't tried the notes app on your iPhone, you really should. Okay, it's happened to all of us. Immediately after a private conversation, an, an online ad just pops up on your computer or phone with the very thing you were discussing. You're like, hmm, coincidence? Now, from a technical standpoint, Facebook and many of the other apps can have full access to your phone's microphone to listen and record everything you say, even if the app isn't running. So yes, snooping can be done. Big tech companies, especially Facebook, they say, oh no, we don't do any of that. But let's keep them honest. On your iPhone, you're gonna open up your settings menu, then privacy and microphone, and then uncheck any apps that have access to your phone's mic. Now on Android, look under settings and applications, and that's where you're gonna stop any apps from tapping into your phone's mic right there. It's not 100% foolproof, but at least it's a start. See, like Facebook, they may not be listening, but they may be buying data from somebody else who is listening. That's why you want to uncheck any app that has your mic that doesn't need it. Hey, listen, tell three friends about the show, and you can find me at commando.com. This program is a copyrighted production of Westar Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of Westar Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.